Right, let's have a discussion about this Euros match, England versus Denmark. One all draw, could have done better. That's the school report, I think, this evening. Joining me live now from a very lively fan zone is East Midlands reporter Will Hollis. Will, my goodness me, they don't make it easy, do they? What's going on? What is the fans' reaction? Yes, well, all the excitement, all of the tension, and it all goes wrong. It was an 18th minute tap in from Captain Harry Kane that took England ahead, but it didn't last forever as Denmark equalised pretty soon after. It has been a tense match here before the 500 or so people in Nottingham that have come down to Binks Yard in front of the biggest outdoor screen in the East Midlands. Lots of people waving their flags, cheering on England. But towards the second half and afterwards, it was nail-biting and this wasn't really the result that they wanted. It means that they do now have to fight against Slovenia to make sure that they do get to go to the, the final 16 into the next round instead of a clear win here that would have put them through with no objections even with a loss in the next game the football here is ending but the party is only just beginning <laughs> well i can see people i can see yeah hello lads yes thank you very much i can see people throwing pints of beer in the air in celebration at that harry kane goal will did you get coated in lager I I'd assume, by the way, that people may have snuck out of work a little early today and may be phoning in on Friday suggesting that they may need a duvet day. Yes, well, the football started at five o'clock. This opened at three o'clock and some people, of course, would have got out of work a little bit earlier. I was speaking to one chap who says that he takes the days off for these football games. Now, regarding the beer, here in Nottingham, we're a little bit more civilised. I didn't see any pints going up in the air here. <laughs> but new research from Aldi says that every time England score, Gareth Southgate, Scott, Gareth Southgate Scott side sends five on, million Gareth pints... Southgate! into the air so every time that there's a goal five million pints go in the air i was speaking to the chap who runs the events for this place pink's yard and he says it's good for business because it means that they have to buy another beer but it also means that they have to buy a load more mops as well well to be fair it doesn't look as if nottingham fans have had a problem with that result they seem very animated and very energized by gareth southgate's rather strange formulation of players on the pitch today but they seem happy will now you go and have a lager yeah put your feet up and we'll no doubt be re-energizing you for the next match against slovenia He's gone. Well, let's speak to Big Sam Allardyce now for some expertise on exactly what's gone on now. Big Sam, is it just me or is this quite painful watching? What is happening? Well, what a waste of beer first. <laughs> yes, Indeed. It is a waste of beer. Uh, uh, unfortunately, I am not smiling. I am very disappointed. And of course, um, the lack of organization the lack of energy in the england side today was very apparent top quality players not being able to perform to the best is a big a big big worry we saw it in the second half against serbia we've seen it almost through the entire game today where denmark's tactics really outweighed england's tactics and while we might have a better quality of player in terms of all rounds in terms of the team we picked uh, certainly Denmark as a team played much better than than England did. And the mean, that, that was really down to the fact that Denmark pressed England. They pressed and pressed and pressed, forced them into basic errors. England, yeah. in the same position when Denmark had the ball, stood off them, allowed them to play through them. And, of course, I think they find themselves extremely lucky this evening that it's it's a 1-1 it's a point we can't keep coming back and saying, for me, well, it's a good point. You know, we can move on. They've just yeah. got to get better. Gareth has to pick the right team. He has to look at the team in the two the two games they've got. He has to look at the squad and he has to look at the system and say, I have to change something. I have to be quite, I, I personally think, quite dramatic and say, this is our tactics, this is who's going to play, this is the way we're going to play in the next game. And give a, a little bit of spirit and hope 
from for the fans who are obviously out there supporting the team and throughout the country uh, a little bit more hope because at the moment if we come across a Spain you know we come across a France yeah you, you know I, I I can't see us doing doing the job I can't see us winning the game you know no. so you know the teams we've just played are lower lower down in the rankings in the international scene and we've struggled Sam, as you say, on paper, and indeed I think we're the favourites according to the bookmakers going into this tournament, on paper this is a team of absolutely star players. What would you do differently? What's Gareth Southgate getting wrong, Sam? Well, personally, I'd point, I'd point out in no un, uncertain circumstances, you know, what's going, what's going wrong. I mean, uh, you know, I would sit the players down and say, you know, what, what, what are you playing at? You know, what are you doing? Why are you underperforming? Why are you underperforming? Why aren't you hitting the top of your level that you hit with England sides in the past uh, and with your club side? And I yeah. think that um, you really need to nail them down. It's time It's time to not be too nice. It's time to yeah. show your, your aggression as a manager. It's time to really nail the players down to give them a, a you know, if you like, a kick... I kick up the backside and say, this is an underperformance. You need to get where you should be and you need to get there right now and you need to give the, ourselves a, a, a chance to go forward and win this tournament and we need to keep the hope up for the English fans. He's going to face a huge amount of criticism, both yeah. the players and the manager, after this performance. Now, use that criticism as a basis of getting a positive attitude and going out and proving everybody wrong in the next game. I mean, I appreciate what you're saying about the players. And certainly when you do sort of mark them out of 10, you know, nobody's at the high end of that scale. Um, but at the same time, it's about the manager, isn't it? It's about where he's playing players. You know, players are being played out of position. The players themselves don't seem to be gelling as a team. How do you sort that, Sam? Because it is difficult, isn't it, bringing a group of players together after a pretty long and gruelling season with the Premier League to then get them all playing together and having that chemistry. How do you do it? Because it seems to me that Southgate isn't really inspiring them to be their best. Well, there's many factors. Uh, there's many factors. Obviously, fatigue is a big factor. Mental fatigue as, as well as physical fatigue. So, so it comes down... It's not... A, it's not really about the training. It's not. It's it's about the tactics and about getting the players ready, physically and mentally. Because they've had such a long season, there's not really that need to train them that much. It's all really about the system and about how they should play and how they should apply themselves in the game and give them enough rest. Obviously, dietitians, nutritionists, recovery. I mean, that's all in place for England. There is no better place to be than finding out what your recovery time should be, what you should eat, what you should drink, when you should rest, when you should have a massage, when you should go in the in the ice bath. You know, it, it's all there. When you should have your psychologist, if you want to talk to him, it's all there for England. It's just not gelling at the moment. And the individuals need to take stock of their own game and really start performing. Harry Kane needs to get all the team together without Gareth and say, come on, lads, what are we doing? Yeah, He's why without Gareth? Why would you say without Gareth, Sam? It, it, it needs to be it needs to be done privately between them, and say what do you want to do? What do you want to do? You, do you really want to do? Because Gareth's doing doing all the tactics and picking the side of what do. He needs to say, look, come on, let's get it together. What we're, what the, what we're playing at? For some of mm. them, it's the last chance. Probably for Harry, it's his last chance to win one. Yeah, I mean, Harry hasn't won anything in his, in his career. So to try and win the Euros is bigger for him than anybody else. Yes, but at the same time, are the tactics right? I mean, lots of people are no. saying they're playing far too no, defensively. They're not, they're not, they're not. How, how would how would you do it, Sam? What what needs to be done? Because there's no flair, there's no attacking forward play. Really, it's all passing backwards, being safe. They're doing high balls, but they're not winning them in the air. Absolutely, I think that uh, what what uh, what we really face today. And England can look at the tactics and say they were very poor in, in possession of the ball. It really wasn't about that. It was really getting up and pressing Denmark in their own half. If they had gone and pressed Denmark from the very start 
and put them under pressure. In the reverse, Denmark showed how poor we were today because they did that. And we didn't do that. And because we didn't do that, that's why Denmark came out the better team today, looked the better team, had more shots at goal and looked more likely to win this game than we did. So it's not all about what you do in possession. It's about what you do out of possession. And I can listen to Alan Shearer all day shouting, why don't we press? Why are we not pressing? Why are we not running in behind? Why are we not passing the ball forward? Exactly right. We all saw it today. Gareth will definitely hopefully see that when he looks at and reviews the game, shows the players and say this has to change. So I'm looking forward to Slovenia then. I mean, would you start the same team? Who would you start? Anyone different? Would you have Harry well, Kane well, starting? Fortunately, fortunately for us, we're nearly through. And I think that um, I think that uh, you look at you look at Slovenia and say, what are the weak points? And we focus on exploiting the weak points. In the, in the reverse of that, we say, we are going to sh shut Slovenia down. We're not going to let the goalkeeper pass it out to his own players in his own 18-yard box. When they do, we're going to press them. And we're going to press them all over the pitch in their own half. And we're going to yeah. force them into mistakes to give us the opportunity to capitalise on that and go and try and create more and score goals. We haven't done that yet. We didn't do it today. And we couldn't break down Denmark because we didn't do it. So when we yeah. had to break Denmark down with the 11 behind the ball in their own half, we simply couldn't do it today. So it's not, it's not a huge... It's not a huge task in terms of knowing knowing what we should be doing and what we shouldn't. It's pretty simple right. in football terms.